Genesis chapter 15, we're going to read the first verse to the sixth verse. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. David said in Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is for the children of God to come together. And I thank God for seeing you again. Thank God for bringing us back safe and well. And I thank God for the gift of love. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So please take your Bible, read your Bible. Brother, your Bible. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Governor, your Bible. Everybody in the Bible. Because we are eating spiritually now. Take your Bible. Let's read it from Genesis chapter 15, verse 1 to 6. Ready? Read. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing I go justice, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given me no sin. And lo, one born in my house is mine head. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thy head, but he that shall come forth out of thy own power shall be thy head. And he brought him forth and brought, and said, Look now toward heaven. And tell the stars, and if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he was counted righteous in Jesus' name. Amen. Spirit of the living God, remain standing. Lord, I thank you for this word. We have the righteousness of your people in this side. Let all these righteous people, Father God, Walk according to your word. Align themselves according to your principle. That your word will never depart from their mouth and from your heart. They will always confess it day and night. Father, I pray, any power of darkness will not stand before them. The word of their mouth shall be established as they speak it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Fill them with your spirit. Let the spirit of truth be with them. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of might and the spirit of power. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be sitting in this presence. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, uh, as I said, I was saying that it's glad to be back in the house of God. And it's, I'm glad to see all of you doing well and uh, being in good health. I thank God always wherever I am about you. And it is my prayer that none of you will miss heaven. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. As the God is valued out wherever you go, God will value you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I want you to be used as a vessel of honor wherever you are in the name of Jesus. I declare that your children, your grandchildren will sit with you. President with kings and princes in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your children will do well at school. Amen. They will aspire high. And I pray that your children will have the knowledge that they will not, not only be mentally strong, but they will also be financially strong. Amen. And I declare that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we just read Genesis chapter 15, verse 1 to 6. My key verse is verse 6, where it says that, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. So I want to build from what I left two weeks ago on speaking your righteousness. It's important, my brothers and sisters, that we know who we are. If a priest doesn't know who he is, people mess him up. If a police officer does not know who he is, they will mess him up. He will not access what he has the right to access. The same thing you and I, if we don't know who we are, then we will not take all the benefit God has prepared for us. We have defined in time past righteousness as a right standing with God. 
The righteousness has the ability to stand with God without guilt, without inferiority, and without condemnation. Being equal, heir with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to build on that because you may say, but that's in the New Testament, we know it. And that's why I brought you back in the Old Testament for you to know that being righteous is nothing, is not only a New Testament event, it's also a Old Testament event. Since the foundation of the world, God wants us to be righteous. When you are righteous, you not allow the things that are against the word of God. You live right. You talk right. Justice is your foundation. Love is your foundation. Peace is your foundation. You speak what God has laid down for you in the world, in the book of life, which we call the Bible. And that what we can understand is an encounter between God and Abraham. Let it be also an encounter between you and God today. The way God spoke to Abraham, when Abraham said to God that, I have no head. And God went back to Abraham and said, Abraham, know that I have the shield, the shield means the defense, and I am also the exceeding great reward. In me, there's a great abundant compensation. And Abraham went further because Abraham stood before God without guilt, without inferiority. Abraham knew that he walks right before God. There's no sin God can remind him that Abraham, you can't come close to me because you're a sinner. Abraham engaged with God, communicated with God, talked with God, said, what will you do for me because I don't have and here, except this Eliezer of Damascus. God said, no, Abraham. It's not Eliezer who is your head. Your head will come to your bow. Your head will come to your Lord. Sorry. And then, Abraham looked at his physical nature. It was impossible for him to have a child. Because Abraham was already advanced in age. What is impossible with man is impossible with God. When men have lost hope, God brings hope. Amen. When men have given up, God brings a breakthrough. Amen. Abraham looked at himself. He looked at the wife he had at the time, Sarah. Because Sarah was already advance and in age. Abraham looked at himself and said, there was no hope to have a truth. But isn't it God is the maker of all things? If he made you, he can remake you, he can, he can revive you. So Abraham didn't have that. But what is important for you to understand in the reading of this text is that this is Genesis 15, because you, you look, I, I would appreciate when you have time, you look at verse 8 and uh, uh, further down, you look at also verse 18, you look at verse uh, uh, 9 and 10. I'm not going to read it, but I'm pleased in your own time, please have time to read, that, to read it. But what it shows, it indicates here, it indicates our connection to righteousness.
and a total dog and a young preacher. Go and sacrifice for me. When Abraham did this, the head came to pass. Because if you go further, you find out that God is talking to Abraham chapter 18, is telling that next year this time thou shalt have a child. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. But I'm not going to go that way. What I want to focus here, I want to focus about speaking your righteousness. It's important, my brothers, wherever you are, you speak what you have the right to speak. Don't let yourself be overwhelmed by friends, by your environment, by your circumstances, so you cannot talk the truth anymore. Don't, don't be a person where that, oh, I don't want my friend to see like as if uh, 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 I'm not complying with them. No. You were born on your own and you die on your own. You don't need anybody. So therefore, God has to be your preeminence. In everything you do, God has to be your superiority. The righteousness of Abraham received was connected to the covenant he had with God. And you have to know that we don't have to do anything to receive righteousness. All we have to do is to believe. And out of, out of the blood of covenant, righteousness was born. Out of the blood of covenant, love, the love of God was born. Out of the covenant, the blood of covenant, the Agape love of God was born. When you see the agape love of God, the agape love of God is not the, the love human beings have. It's the unconditional love of God. The indispensable love of God. God will look beyond your fault. God will see you more than you can think of. You can see that God is not seeing your sin by seeing what Jesus Christ has accomplished for you. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Abraham did not know God. You have to know that Abraham came from Mesopotamia, which today we call Iraq. Abraham, in, 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 in Chadi, where he came from, they used to worship the moon. Superstition was what Abraham knew. Like today, there are people around the world they believe in witchcraft and they believe in God. There are people who believe that if they have to do something, they have to wear things here, they have to wear things around their lungs, they have to uh, put some uh, 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 colors on their face. That's the one Abraham had with his father, Terah. But he had an encounter with God, God spoke to him. He believed. He did not question God. He did not ask, how will this happen when you tell me to leave my family, leave my, my, my entire relations, and go more than 780 miles to Canaan? Because what, if you look at where Iraq is, you have to go through Jordan, and you begin to go up there and come down because Abram, where he lived, was quite close to Egypt. How would you go to somewhere you don't know? I know a man, an American man called uh, John. He was uh, one of the, the, the preachers. He was uh, an insurance broker. God spoke to him in America and said, I want you to pack your stuff with your wife. You're going to go to South Africa for you to begin to preach the word of God. He said, but God, I don't have any money to buy a ticket. He said, no, you go to the airport. There is somebody there who will give you the ticket. The man flew to South Africa. And when he arrived, because at that time, uh, no, no, he used the boat. By the time he arrived in South Africa, at the, at the port, a man was waiting for him. That man took him. The man lived in South Africa all the years he preached the 
word of God, God took care of it. Because we did God. What I'm trying to say to you, when God speaks to you, and you know that God has spoken to you, do not try to resist it. Abraham received the fact, the same mandate, he obeyed the mandate, he believed the mandate, and he found himself to where God wants him to be. And Abraham today is the father of all nations. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I am the righteousness of God. And you are the righteousness of God too. All God wants you this morning is to believe him. He wants you to wake up to righteousness and see no more. God wants you to wake up no longer a life of sin, no longer a life that displeases God, no longer a life that offends God. When we steal, when we lie, when we kill, when we fornicate, when we uh, 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 do uh, the, the sexual sins, when we uh, uh, disobey our parents, when we uh, uh, don't love one another, when we are so selfish, self-centered, everything we want for ourselves, these things offend God. When we go and bow before images, we offend God. When we cannot live a life of prayer, we offend God. When we cannot give, when we have the means or the, the, the ability to give, we offend God. All God wants from you today, before you leave this place, believe Him in every area of your life. In every area of your life, believe God that God cannot bring you on this earth and then abandon you. He has brought you on earth for a purpose. God wants you to be his representative. God wants you to be his ambassador. God wants you to be his spokesperson. God will talk to you. God will use you. The same thing when Abraham believed him, he was credited, he was recognized, he was accepted as right standing with God. Aligning himself with God. Having no fear to talk to God. Because remember, we can only stand before God when we live a life of sinlessness. When you don't have sin, you can stand before God, spend time with him, talk to him, as if you are doing to your friend, as if you are doing to your parent, as if you are doing to your kindred. So, the first thing I want to show you is that the righteousness of God believes. You cannot speak what you have the right to speak if you don't believe the one who gave you the ability. Remember, righteousness is right standing with God. Right standing with God. My friends, what I have to say to you also, my brothers and sisters in this house, not only want to claim your right, but remember, right are connected with responsibilities. When you always claim right, but you don't want to take responsibilities, what you're going to find that your right will not stand. Right standing with God, Connected with your responsibilities. What are your responsibilities? Your responsibilities is to live the life God has prescribed for you in the world. Amen. That's I have no other God. That's I not keep. That's I not lie. That's I not steal. Evil shall not come near you. Among you, there shouldn't be sorcerers. And now you may shouldn't be witchcraft dealers. These things will make you right before God. But if in life you are doing the things that go against the word of God, you cannot stand right with God. You have to align yourself with God. 
How do you align yourself with God? Is it just this way when God says this is wrong, you say it's wrong. If God says it's right, you say it's right. Remember, we were created by God. We didn't create God. Before we existed, God was still God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The righteousness of God believes. Whenever you see the word believed, it means the righteousness of God trusts God. The righteousness of God considers God. The righteousness of God have faith in God. When you have faith, it means that there is, you have the ability to see the visible in the invisible. You have not any evidence. You have not anything to convince you that this will happen, but because you believe that God is able to do it, then you're going to begin to see the manifestation. The firm assurance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's God want you and I to have it. When Abraham believed God, he was, he was credited for righteousness. When Abraham believed God, he was recognized as the righteousness of God. When Abraham accepted what God had said to him, he was recognized as the righteousness of God. Abraham was accounted for righteousness because he believed that God says, and he believed. He did not question how this is going to be, how this is going to happen. The one thing Abraham did is the one thing God is asking you and me this morning is to believe him. And look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I believe God. I believe God. again. I when you believe God, God has no choice just to do your will. God will do our will when we believe him. And we walk right in his sight. As I've said to you many times, if you live a life of sin, sins will make you coward. Sins will make you coward. It will rob you of your right. It will rob you of your ability. Because when you want to stand and claim what you have the right to claim, the devil will tell you, not you. You're a sinner. You live a clean life. You are an hypocrite. In that time, you show us that you are this, but in that time, you eat with demons. These things are happening among us. Remember this. God is not looking at you anymore as a sinner. Because the price has only been paid. But he's looking at you through the free gift who is our Lord Jesus Christ? You accept him as Lord and Savior. In Romans chapter 4, verse 3 and 5, the Bible tells us that for what said the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that walketh in the reward, not reckon of grace, but of death, but to him that walketh not, but believe it on him that will justify the ungodly. His faith is accounted for righteousness. What basically God is saying here? He's saying that the ungodly that believe Jesus Christ are declared righteous. If today you never heard about Jesus Christ, you never received that opportunity to give your life unto him, but if you hear it for the first time and you say, I receive him as my Lord and Savior, even though you were a sinner yesterday, from that very moment, you no longer a sinner. That's a good thing about Jesus Christ. That's a good thing coming to God. God will no longer look at you from your yesterday, but he look at you from the very time you accept his son Jesus Christ, and from that moment and forward, that's how God is going to see you. If you believe that you are the son of God, remember you are declared righteous. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died 
for your sins. Yes, you are declared righteous. Do you believe that the blood has cleansed your sin? Yes, you are declared righteous. Do you believe that Jesus' body was a sacrifice for you? Yes, you are declared righteous. When you are declared righteous, you become just like him in him. Remember, if I have a life today, the life I have is not my life. This life has been given to me by him. And if I live, I live in him. I stand in him. If you are sitting right now, you are sitting in him. If you are playing music now, you are playing music in him. He has given you that ability. It's only a fool will go and say, my strength is mine. No. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 16, 17, and 18, God is saying that I have given you power. I have given you the ability. Everything you do, everything you, you go around, you breathe in, you breathe out, is God's breath you have. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. The strength you have is God's strength. Because if it's taken from you, that's it. You're no longer a living being. You become now a corpse, a dead corpse. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. But one thing I want to reassure you, my brothers and sisters, as the righteousness of God, don't feel guilty about your past. Don't feel guilty about the things you did 10 years ago. All you men, people, the devil man might be saying, do you know how many men you slept with? Do you know how many women you've been, you've been pregnant with? You say, devil, yes, you are right. I've been pregnant with so many women. But you have forgotten that somebody paid the price. I'm no longer an impregnant man. I'm not the righteousness of God. Amen. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. If he comes and say, do you know how many times you've been shoplifting? You say, yes. I used to shoplift, but you have forgotten one thing. The price has been paid by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm no longer a shoplifter. Amen. If he comes and remind you the way you used to take the killer, the way you used to, to do uh, 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 marijuana. Be calm. Say, yes, you are right. I used to. But now, I'm not on the doing it. Remember the blind man. When the Pharisees came to him and said, but he used to be blind. How can you see? You remember the answers he gave to the Pharisees? He said, I used to be blind. But now, oh, give me the answer. But now, I can see. oh, but now, I can see. the devil will always take you back in your past. But God will take you back to your future. Don't let anybody describe you about your past. When I look at bring it to you, you say, yes, I used to. But now, Christ paid my price. Amen. I'm no longer what I used to be. Amen. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. One thing I want to say to you, please remember this. You may have been born in a family where poverty was the description of your family. You may have been born in a family where poverty was there. That's fine. That's not your fault. But you cannot die in poverty. Because if you die in poverty, that's your fault. Because now you know the truth. The Bible says, my Bible says in the book of John chapter 8, that's not the truth. And the truth has set you free. Amen. You cannot know the truth and remain the same. Yes, the man couldn't buy a car. That's fine. It's not your fault. Your mother couldn't drive. That's okay. It's not your fault. You couldn't have a good meat every day in the house. That's okay. It's not your fault. Mama was not able to buy the meat or to buy a, a, a good meal on the day of festivity. That's okay. You couldn't be able to buy a good dress in the, in the shop. You had to work to wait for the, 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 the leftover or the handmade cloth. That's okay. But you can no longer, since you've known the truth, keep on living your own life the same way your parents brought you up. That's, you 
You have failed to know the God who created you. Oh, can I hear an amen for that? Amen. Oh, can I hear a big amen for that? Amen. Oh, can I hear a glorious amen for that? Amen. I am the righteousness of God amen. in Christ Jesus. So please, you have to remember, in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are qualified in him. In him, we are more than a conqueror. In him, you can do all things. In him, you can exercise your right to be cleansed from sin. In him, your, act, your past has been wiped away, has been wiped out. People can come and remind you, say, oh, do you know how many abortions you've done? And now you're looking for a man. That's good. That's, that's fine. I've done many abortions. But now, I'm in Christ Jesus. If they tell you, do you know that we're met right? How many people you've killed in town? That's okay. But now I'm not like a murderer. In him, I have become more than a conqueror. My sins have been wiped away. My past is gone. The Lord gives us that opportunity. Fear not. I am. Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Through him you are made righteous. You may have done somebody wrong, but the very day you have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, remember you are made righteous. You must believe God. You must trust God. You must have faith in God. But what I'm saying to you, not about going back to sin. Going back to sin is like going back to your own vomit. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Has anyone here has ever for me? Thank you, Teddy. But did you go back to take, or have you for me before? Have you ever gone back to take your for me and eat it? No answer. Why? Because the minute you see it, you cannot <coughs> see it. <coughs> My Bible tells me. What goes in does not defile, but what comes out defiles. The second thing I want to show to you, the righteousness of God awake. The righteousness of God wake up. The righteousness of God come out of darkness. The righteousness of God step out of the things that displease God. My brothers in life learn to write down when you go to a seminar, when you go to a conference, when you come in the heart of God. Learn to write things. Learn to read these things. That's the way you gain knowledge. Because the minute you come out of this place, you're going to forget. How many times for you to see how the devil has possessed many of you in this house, how many times I've said, Learn to write things down. Look around, how many people are writing down? That's how the brain of man is so hard. That's how the mind of man, if this world is not there, man will not change. Wake up to righteousness. You cannot be righteous, but you are not angry. You cannot be righteous but you are not honest. You cannot be righteous, there's no integrity. One of the things when I do uh, uh, marital counseling with a couple, I always remind them to be truthful to one another. Honesty, you could be, somebody else can question you, but your wife or your husband, all your children cannot question you. People cannot question your integrity. In everything you do, people have to aspire to behave like you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's important, my brothers and sisters. You wake up. How do you wake up to righteousness? You have to know your 
yourself who you are in Christ Jesus. You have to know your identity. You have to know your role. You have to know your responsibilities. Let us not fool ourselves. Because this life you have today is not the life you're going to have tomorrow if you cannot work with God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. A right to righteousness. Know your right. Many believers think having money is evil. Many believers, when you say, go and find some money, go and do some job so you can earn money, go and sell so you can earn money, live the financially strong, wild, affluent, free. People say, oh, money is evil. Money is not evil. When you love the you love the money more than you love God, then the love of God is evil. God said Himself in the book of uh, uh, Agai that He says, "Gold and silver belong to me." Did you know that silver is what we call money, and the value of money is known by the gold you have. Praise the name of the Lord. It is your right to have money. It is your right to have vision. It is your right to sleep well, free, without any trouble. It is your right to have a job. It is your right to invest and expect a return. It is your right to get married and have children. It is your right to have children in the house. But it's not your right to get married and not have children. That's not your right. God has not planned that. The plan of God is for you to be a procreator. Because the one who created you is a creator. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Money is not going, going to come to you if you do not feel that you have the right to have money. Healing is not going to come to you if you don't believe that you have the right to be healed. Dream deliverance is going to come to you if you don't believe that you don't have the right to be delivered. Some people think that it is okay for demons to come and mess them up. Some people think it's okay to sleep at night and see as if they were having sexual intercourse with somebody. And when they wake up, they feel themselves wet and there's no one around. That is not right. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. Or oh, some, some of you said, Oh, I like to masturbate when I'm in the bathroom. That's not. That's not your right. Masturbation is evil. Or pornography. You say, Hey, I, I, I never knew this. I will practice it. You are practicing evil. Am I talking to somebody?
Because if you don't serve the Lord, you'll be ignorant. And ignorance of knowing who you are in Christ Jesus will breed mistrust in you. Ignorance means just the absence of knowledge. The inability to know who you are. Your ignorance of the righteousness of God will not only breed or bring mistrust, it will bring envy. It will bring jealousy. I'm sure when couples are discussing or arguing with one another, when they see you see your wife or your husband with somebody, some people feel insecure. Why? Because they lose the sight to know who they are. I cannot go and kiss somebody on the lips when my wife is there and when my wife is not there. Because I have to know who I am. I am a married man. I have to do only what I have to do with my wife. I'm a young girl. A man doesn't have to come with his hand and put his hand inside of me. So I just want to test it. There's no test thing here. You remember I've told you about try before you buy. You remember the try before you buy? Don't let anybody try you. Say, I have to get to first girl to know if you are the, the one I, I, I'm looking for, then I can go and see your parents. If you say that to you, tell them you are with the wrong person. I am the righteousness of God. Everything God has created is good. So what God has created, you man cannot come and say, let me try it before I make a decision. No, everything God has created is good. If you work with God, things will work well with you. We have to avoid ignorance because ignorance leads us to make incorrect decisions. When we make incorrect decisions, we have incorrect outcomes. When we have a good outcome, we have difficulties to understand why we made those decisions. Many Christians these days struggle to make decisions. You come across to people, you say, what do you think about this? So I agree with you. They don't agree with you because it's not that they agree with you, it's because they don't have the argument. They don't have the basis. Ignorance leads someone to make incorrect decisions. Ignorance makes someone not to understand why they're doing what they're doing. After you come across, you ask somebody, why do you want to do it? They'll tell you, I don't know. Why you don't know? Because you have forgotten that you are the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God will always seek to know what they're doing. Number three. I mean, one of the things also I have to say to you that ignorance brings injustice. Where there's ignorance, there's always confusion. And where there's ignorance, money, it will cost you money. When you are ignorant, it will cost your business. When you are, you are ignorant, it affects social relationships between human beings. If the wife and the husband cannot agree on things, if the husband or the wife is always ignorant, it will always cause problems in the relationship. I'm not talking to somebody here. I'm not speaking to somebody here. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, speak your right. Speak your right. Stand right before God. <laughs> Stand right before God. I am the righteousness of God. Number three, the righteousness of God declares when you are right before God, you have to be able to talk. That's why when we are praying here, we want you to declare. We don't want the people when they are praying. No. It means you have not known who you are. The righteousness of God declares. The righteousness of God speaks. The righteousness of God confesses. The righteousness of God affirms. You have to be bold to talk. Remember what happened to 
Bartimaeus. When Jesus Christ was entering Jericho, Bartimaeus earned to it. He had what is happening. They said Jesus Christ of Nazareth was a passing by. And Bartimaeus threw up the guard of soul. And he began to run to the Lord and cry, Son of David, have a mercy on me. And the more he screamed, the people stopped him and said, Shut up! And as they came, stopping him, it increased. And then the Lord, it came to the Lord's attention. And the Lord said, What does he want? Who's that? They said, It's the blood of Bartimaeus. In life, remember, society will always define you. They said, Oh, it's the poor guy who lived in the corner of the street. They will not say, It's John. I will say the poor guy will live in the corner of the street. And that day, Bartimaeus was bold to stand to tell the Lord what he wants. I see that many times to you in the house. You come to see me and I ask you what you want. You know the answers most of you tell me, I want God to bless me. Now, how do you want God to bless you? Why don't you be specific? Because a blessing is an empowerment. So you want God to empower you. Of course. But what do you want to do with the power God is going to give you? If you, after the service, if I talk to people, if I ask the people, say, Pastor, pray for me, God, to bless me. No. Let's move on further. Pastor, I want to God Give me the ability to possess a house. I want God to give me the ability to have children. I want God to give me the ability to meet the man or the woman of my life. Be specific. No, you don't longer have to come and say, bless me. No, because you are righteous. Am I speaking to somebody here? Yeah. Oh, if you understand that, please say amen. Oh, can I have a big amen? Oh, give the Lord a big glorious amen. Amen. The righteousness of God declares. In my Bible, in chapter 10 of Romans, verse 8 to 10, says, But what said it? The word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of God, which we preach. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thy heart, that God had raised him from the dead, that shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the man confession is made unto salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When you speak, you are confessing. If you believe, you become right with God. That's why when we say to you, pray, we are not punishing you, we are not uh, pressurizing you, all we are saying, speak what you have the right to speak. And when you speak what the right, you have the right to speak, my Bible tells me what you confess will be established. Things will not happen unless you say it. Praise the name of the Lord. Because when they accuse of the brethren, Tell you about the wrong things you have done. But you have to stand firm in the world and declare that you are the righteousness of God. Satan will not understand where you are when you declare what you have the right to declare. When you sleep at night, you see as if somebody is touching you or you see the spirit of heaviness, you stand and scream the name of Jesus Christ. You say, Lord, I command this thing to get out of my house. A child shall have his good sleep. For you never sleep no slumber. Therefore, watch over me because I have to sleep. I traveled years ago uh, in Africa. As I was entering the, the room, the hotel where I was staying, I heard, I felt like something came of 
upon me. I did not move an inch. I said, in the name of Jesus, get out. I evict you from this room. If I didn't do that, that spirit could have taken over me and messed me up. You cannot. Even wherever I travel, wherever I go, even recently when I, I put my feet in, I said, Father, I evict every force that are in this house. In this apartment, and not take authority over it. Nobody has to know that. But you have to declare your righteousness. I have to sleep. I don't have time to be worried that something will come. No! I have the righteousness of God. All powers have been given to me to travel tra tra upon Satan and Scorpions, and no power will stand before me. That's the power we have. But you have to say it. If you don't say it, it won't come to pass. If you look at your own Bible in Job 22 28, if you don't declare it, it will not be established. You have to learn to speak that when they say you yeah, pray, even when you play your keyboard, you can play your keyboard, but you're still speaking. You can play your guitar, but you're still speaking. Say, Lord. Let them be evicted in the name of Jesus. Amen. No weapon fought against me will stand. As I have been the word of God, Lord, release your missile. Lord, release your angel. Let the every army begin to pursue my enemies because of the Lord of hosts. That's what you have to speak. Quit believing that your power will be on leaves or somebody doing all this uh, 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 gimmick. No! Your power is in speaking the word of God. The word of God carries the power. That's why in Isaiah 55, my Bible tells me from 8, 9, 10, and 11, the word of God will never go and return for it. It will fulfill what it has been spoken to do. Remember, there's a power in the word of God. You don't have to feel yourself as if there's nothing in the world. That's not the problem. All you have to do, speak the word. The Holy Spirit will back the word. Speak the word. Heaven will send the power to back that word. Because God cannot lie. My Bible tells me in the book of Numbers, my God cannot lie. If he said it, he will do it. Amen. If he spoke it, it will come to pass. Amen. I want you to believe in that word. Abraham believed God and God counted him righteous. All you have to do also, speak the word. Believe the word of speaking. Nobody will mess your life. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When I speak in him, no hell can come close to me. No hell can stop me. Remember when you are walking with God, when the anointing of God is in you, when God's power is in you, once the garland of victory is on you, when God has endued you with power and ability and knowledge, the light is shining in you. No power of darkness can come close to you. No demons from hell can mess you up. Nothing under the sea can mess you up because you are the light of the world. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Remember the day you were born, my brothers and sisters. When you believe it and you said it, you were born again. When you speak healing, the same thing with healing. When you speak healing, healing takes place. When you speak deliverance, deliverance takes place. Amen. When you speak about money, money takes place. Amen. Let nobody lie to you. We need the money. Everything in this house is done with money. Everything we pay in this house is because of money. Money is a spiritual commodity. Nobody should lie to you. By your money, you should look with it with honesty, with integrity. Everything has to be in line with the word of God. The Lord Jesus Christ 
has to give people talent. It's the one he gave five. To other, he gave them three. And to the other one, he gave one. He said to them, go and do business. When God wants you to do business, because he understands that you need money to live on earth. If you don't have money on earth, you're not going to need to go to become a beggar. If we don't pay this hope, we will not come back next month. Why? Because we have no money. Money belongs to the Lord. But what we don't want is for you to save more money, to save money more than you save God. Every day in the week we can't see you. Where is he? He's at work. Even Sunday, oh yes, he works on Sunday. And what happens on Wednesday? Oh, Wednesday he finishes at 10. How about Thursday? Thursday he comes in the morning. And then on Saturday, Saturday he does overtime. But like when you do all these things, do you remember that you don't have time to enjoy the fruit of the earth? Mm -hmm. Remember in my Bible in Isaiah, 59. My Bible tells me that don't make the holy days your holy day. Oh, glory be to God. Yeah. When you look at your Bible, 13, 14, you find it. God does not want you to use the days. He wants you to be in his presence to become your days of enjoying yourself. Mm. My husband, the last time we went to get in the restaurants, it's two years after the church. Why can't we go to the every day church? And when things happen there, the phone we to pastor and in prayer. The righteousness of God doesn't do that. We see you today. We won't see you tomorrow. We won't see you the day after. We won't see you the month after. Pastor, I'm so busy. No, Pastor, I have nothing to do with that. Whether you come or you don't come is between you and the Lord. Because the Lord will bring the book of remembrance. He said, Oh, we have uh, Brother Peter here. Brother Peter, you open the book of remembrance. Ah, Brother Peter has always been an absentee. It's not the pastor. I have also my own race. If I fail to come and preach the word of God, I'm in trouble. The righteousness of God believes and proclaims. The righteousness of God speaks. Don't use excuses to pray. I bow in singing. You know, yesterday, this song you sang here this morning. Man of War, Lion of Judah. was my song yesterday when I was partying. Because sometimes, when I cannot know the lyrics, I mimic. I just started, Man of War, Lion of Judah. I bow down and worship you. Yahweh, I give you a battle. I could have said, let me put so, let me put this. No! He gave me that opportunity to bow. Many people have sought to bow, they can't bow. But why can't I worship him while I'm having this bow? The righteousness of God believes and proclaims. The righteousness of God speaks. What do you speak? I speak my right. Where is your right? My right is in the word of God. And how do I speak my right? I speak my right in my mouth. Where? It comes from my heart. I want to ask to do this. When I say, where is your right? You say your right is in the word of God. What is your right? Your right is in the word of God. What is your right? My right is in the word of God. Where is your right? Oh, look at it on the screen. It's on the screen there. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to invent a wheel when there's already a wheel there. All you have to do is just take the wheel, put it 
into the car and drive off. Because many times we believers we struggle unnecessarily. The things are there. Just take it and do it. What is your right? My right is in my mouth and my heart. No, no, that's the way it is your right. What is your right? My right is in the word of God. Where is your right? My right is in my mouth and my heart. It is when the word of God gets in your heart and gets in your mouth and you speak it. Your righteousness, the righteousness of God comes to a highest level. When you begin to speak, no demon will stand on our way. Every spirit that does not honor God will not come in my house. I decree and declare, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Because the Lord said, God will work upon the hills. He will renew the strength and the wings of the eagle. They will walk and they will not fail. They will run and will never get tired. If you speak this word, no demon will mess you up. Because it said to you, we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. You have to know these things. The blood of Jesus Christ is your weapon. The word of God is your weapon. The name of Jesus Christ is your weapon. All you have to do, use them. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I just want you to say this. I take my right. I take my right. Right. And put it in my mouth, mouth. to connect it with it. And I put it in my mouth. mouth. And keep saying it loud. And keep saying it loud. And keep saying it loud. And when you do those things, you take the corresponding action. Mm -hmm. Those things I speak begin to manifest in the natural. Husband, you don't have to be. Things are not happening in your house. And you just look at your wife and say, since we got married, nothing is happening. No. You bring your wife and say, I speak to you. I, I'm just giving uh, uh, an example. I'm not saying that my wife should, have, uh, should be pregnant. Because I, I don't have time anymore for that. It's just an illustration. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I know I, I, I don't need any more children. I need my son to bring me more children. I need my grandson to give me more children. I need my brother here to give me more children. And I've already spoken to him. I've already told him I need more than five children. Yes. All he has to do is to shoot. Yes. All he has to do is to shoot. Yes. All he has to do is to shoot. Yes. And I talked to my son of the and I said to him, the day you have your own life, I will pray that you will shoot. Yes. Every time you go out, you shoot. Yes. Every time you come in, you shoot. Yes. I need more shoot. Now, let me say this to you. You cannot be in your house. You've lived for so many months. Because sometimes intellectualism run up to make us a bit fools. Say, oh, we have our own time, we want to have our own children. Stop that foolishness. The better time to have children is when you are young. Because your body is being designed with you can you can get it. Because when you hit the mid-30s, your body be, begin to become so strong. Anytime things comes in, it just checks it because it's called foreign body. Don't come with that nonsense and say, we have our own grand pastor. No. So what I was saying, I cannot understand believers, we come and try and pray to pray for us, we are trusting the Lord for the fruit of the womb. Why? Just call your wife and say, this womb, I speak to it right now. When I come in there, you should get pregnant. I release it right now. Amen. And that's what you speak. Amen. And you know what? Before you even go on bed, you say, baby, stand up. You touch it and say, I'm going to release now. But whatever I release, Lord, I trust you that is going to perform your miracle inside my work. Because you say that be fruitful. Multiply. How can I multiply if you cannot release 
that favor in you. That's what the righteousness of God speaks. The righteousness of God has not going more and God said, since we got married, it's now two years, I can't see anything. Did I make the righteous? No! Just get the bed in your wife. Before you even go to bed, you say, baby, come here, come here, come here, come here. 